So let's find another match. Last game was too easy. <clears throat> was too easy. Was too easy. Was too easy. Find match already, fam. You're wasting my storage space. Okay, finally. And we're getting black again. What is it? God, I know I'm black, but that doesn't mean I have to have the black pieces all every time I play chess. Anyways, let's go for our solid coins gambit declined. As I said, we would all oh they go for the same thing again, just like the last episode. Wonderful, wonderful. So of course we continue our development. Let's see if my opponent is going to be able to play it properly this time. So just develop and castle. I play solidly like I did in the last game, setting up this pawn pyramid. Uh, okay, let me just cancel first. There's no rush. Just setting up this pawn pyramid and then capturing this way and after this move. Oh, my opponent hasn't played bishop g5 here. So I hope they do. Okay, they don't. It's slightly nuanced now. So how do I do it in this case? Do I go knight d4? I'm tempted by this move actually. Knight e4, white takes, I take. And after knight d2, I go f5. And my pawn formation in the center is pretty solid. And uh, white slight squared bishop is going to be out of the game for a while. So let me go for this and see if white is going to take. So this is pretty solid, but the only problem is that your light squared bishop is going to be locked in for a while. Which is why many different openings like the Baltic defense. Black tries to get rid of the light squared bishop as fast as possible. But uh, that also has its drawbacks. I mean, just the cursed bishop in this opening. Uh, the cursed light squared bishop. Caged by its own pieces. Oh, so my opponent is thinking here. Okay, if only the last guy thought a little longer during his own time. Yeah, what does that do? I don't know. I don't know okay okay this was actually quite a nice move but then i can go f5 which was the goal anyway so let me just go f5 f5 might seem a little too much but it's not yeah it seems like i'm weakening all this but i'm not weakening anything because i can go knight bd7 knight bd7 here i go if black doesn't take i will take myself my knight is very safe and sound there are no threats with this because that doesn't react really, you know i could just trade uh -huh. what, is that? What, 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 what does that do sir wait i could even play g5 first so just go g5 before taking a knight. Oh no, maybe if I go g5, white just takes my knight first. But I mean, yeah. Man. Do I want to play wild? Should we go for wild stuff? Ugh. But if I go g5, let me calculate the consequences. Hmm. Alright, I can't see anything. G5, pawn moves. I mean, bishop moves. What's pawn? Which pawn is moving? <laughs> bishop moves. Uh, and then I take the knight. If the knight takes first, I just simply recapture. And then the bishop moves. Uh, yeah, I think I should go for that. It's looking like a King's Indian type of position. So let me go for it. I mean, a King's Indian type of attack. Yeah, I knew my opponent was going to do this. Now I can't take the bishop immediately because then my rook would be hanging. So here I'm just going to capture like uh, this. Yeah, and if bishop f5, I have bishop f6. Probably don't even need to do that. But that dark square bishop seems like white's best piece. So let's just get rid of it. Plus, I would be bringing my queen to the f-file with temple if black decides to take. If you don't take, I take and your pawn on e5 is just quite pointless. White can't really try anything here. So, oh, my goodness, this is nothing. But do I even have to take immediately? Maybe I could take here first. I never if bike decides to take. Yeah, I take with check. So I should just take. Yeah, I can take here. Yeah, I can take here. And this is a very funny looking position because I don't have any attack going, but I'm still solid. Ooh, this check on this diagonal could probably amount to something like a passed pawn. No, if I give the check immediately, white has c5. Yeah, but mm, okay, then I can start something. I don't know what it is, but something at least. Mm, 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 what do I do now? Mm. All right, I'm going to go check. If they block the check, I go queen c6, I'm attacking this pawn, this bishop is still useless, all my pawns are on light squares, restricting the bishop, also restricting my own bishop, so both bishops are pretty useless and cursed. So now I just go here, hit this pawn, and I'm prepared to play b6, further undermining this pawn, and the more white tries to protect this pawn, the weaker it becomes. Probably not, I don't know, we're going to see that during the analysis. What? Oh, that was, that's actually a move though. But still nothing serious. This is a potential pass pawn though, so I have to be careful. Wow, I didn't see that coming. 
maybe queen a4 pretty slow move just to play if I, nah i don't think so let me go for this instead so white has to take now if not there would be dire consequences that i don't see <laughs> i'm just hoping there would be because <laughs> yeah. i mean okay I don't know. This bishop is quite useless, just a bishop that's not really doing much, just behind all the pawns that are blocking the bishop from being active. But it's not completely useless because it's playing a very important role of guarding this potential weak foot soldiers. B6 seems like a very good move. If black takes, I take this way, open the A file for my rook. I already have my pawn mass here and I can start pushing my pawns down the board. It could cause a lot of problems. For white i also have to make sure i blockade this pawn if it ever becomes a passed pawn so let's say it takes takes i can have to play bishop e6 at some point also this diagonal seems a little important ah uh, well uh, i don't know maybe a5 oh a5 what yeah a5 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 seems like a move this pawn is weak so maybe a5 is a better move a5 if takes i just take so yeah a5 black doesn't have a4 trapping my queen or whatever because that pawn on b4 will be hanging so don't do that i mean do it so i can win but if i was you i wouldn't do that <laughs> so think oh okay so if i take like this yeah i mean if i take like this yes i can take Come on, do your worst. I'm winning a pawn. I am winning a pawn. Whoop! That's how you win a pawn. We check, in fact. Ooh! Wow! Oh, shoot. My opponent has a uh, rook b7. That's like the one downside. Yes, let's go. Rook is hanging. Rook b7. But I have this. So rook b7 will just chase the rook off our seventh rank. Yeah, rook b7 seems like the right move. Notice how this guy is still pretty useless not a very good place to be in a bishop that is meant to be powerful turns out to be so useless oh and even this guy is not as useless as this guy in my opinion <laughs> i don't know which one is more useless objectively but i i, I think it's this guy though i think it's like I, I'm, I'm just trying to be optimistic for my position let's just have a little fate because my bishop seems useless but it's played a very solid role here so maybe not as useless as i'm saying it is plus this pawn is now a weakness on a2 over here very you know nice weakness that i will munch up in my spare time i'm coming for you little boy my opponent is thinking because now they can't really say oh let me double up on the b file because yeah this guy that i just talked about yeah he's going to fall so he's thinking what do i do what do i do like how do i survive this have i messed up what's wrong with me why are things looking bad for me now do i yeah of course i have to take what am i saying i just have to make sure there was no tactic with e6 or some weird stuff like that <laughs> but there isn't i'm quite safe black does this i take and take then play e6 trade if possible one thing black could try do maybe rook here but i don't think i'm going to allow black take my pawn my pawn on c5 is far superior to the pawn on a2 so i shouldn't be trading them like that because once these three pawns start rolling down the board they could be a real menace to society so uh, my opponent is finally deciding to push the pawn to see whether there's any hope for him surviving <laughs> but i don't think so i don't think so so let's just trade rooks my opponent is probably going to play rook b6 which is why yeah which is why i should have done something else perhaps maybe i just go back with bishop d7 i don't know sometimes it's hard to accept your mistakes that's what my dad said <sighs> yeah, i'm thinking of just going back in peace but i feel like my okay let me just play rook c7 i play rook c7 first oh you know what let me just start rolling my pawns down the board my opponent is trying to get his uh, pawns rolling too, but I don't really, I, I don't see any hope for this guy there. So I, 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 don't, I don't know what all this is all about. So once the pawn goes to a7, probably should go. No, I'll handle that. But I have to be careful. Pass pawns are the enemy of your position. I don't know who said that. Somebody did. Oh, me. There's this, then there's sticks. Oh, there's f4 here so f4 probably should just let this pawn go and play bishop d2 because if i take black has the chance of taking yes so i sh i don't think i should uh yeah i don't i don't think i don't think i should let this pawn fall because then white has a light square bishop controlling the promotion square yeah there's just too many problems involved with that this pawns are not relevant i mean the extra pawn this would not be as relevant as the rest of the pawns plus trading bishops is just going to make my job easier because then yeah so the more i roll these pawns down the board the easier it gets so maybe i, I can just take first and 
then do I want to push this one or that one? Which one do I want to push? 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 Yeah. You know I me. Mean? Okay. Perhaps I should do this. No. Okay. Let me do this. I was thinking of Rook A7 to go after this pawn, but then White has just. Kind of trade and uh, the position looks closer to a draw than anything, so pointless checks like this don't help much. You are just helping the king get closer to the center, that wouldn't do anything for you. Perhaps I should do this, but if I do this, white has this check. My opponent is fighting hard, fighting hard, fighting to stay hard. Huh? Oh, fighting hard, sorry, <laughs> fighting to stay in the game. Uh, yeah, so I think this is what I should do instead. Why want to go here or here though? Okay, let me just leave the back rank so there won't be any forced check or whatever stupidity. Now I can go for this. I can even push my pawn now immediately. Oof, life is good. Oh, white is planning to give me this check though. But it doesn't really do much. Let me just push my pawn. I'm just gonna keep pushing and pushing and pushing. Yeah, that kind of doesn't do anything though. Whoa, 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 whoa wow 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 because if i go here now why just takes takes oh this still wins though no because wow wow i guess i'm going to have to do this then and then just go here and just keep pushing my pawns yep that's how i win this I could give up my rook for the pawn actually. This is a rule you should know. Two pawns on the seventh rank equals a win for you. Yeah, I think I should just continue like this. And uh, yeah, I win. This is how we win it. Yep. Yeah, let me just get rid of this guy first before taking any further action. I'm just winning, so. What a game! what a game wow not as fast as the last episode but uh all right so this is what i missed in this position in this position i could have won a pawn the exchange or smothered checkmate all right so this is what i missed in this position in this position i could have won a pawn the exchange or smothered checkmate with the move queen b6 I only saw this move after I'd already played knight dc3. If you remember, I said, oh wow, maybe this check on this diagonal is going to be dangerous or something like that. Anyway, let's see what happens if the white king goes to the h1 square. If you're a beginner, you might not know this pattern, but this is called the smothered mate. Uh, this mother checkmate in this position with knight f2 the best move for white here would be to give up the exchange with rook takes f2 because otherwise after knight f2 if the king steps back now we play knight to h3 and it's a double check and uh there's nothing the king has to move basically you can't capture the knight because the queen would still be checking the king you can't do anything you just have to move the king and after the king moves we play this amazing move queen to g1 check and after rook takes g1, there's knight to f2 checkmate. Which is why after knight to f2, the best move is rook takes f2. But after queen b6 immediately, the other move white, the best move here, um, actually the engine is showing the king to h1. But here white can also uh, play e3 just to open up the second rank for the queen. And after queen takes e3, here white could just step with the king to the h1 square. And I do have... Um, all this and here I can't win the exchange with knight to e3 because the queen just captures and I've lost the knight for nothing.